And in this corner, nerds! And I'm going to talk about me, myself, and my problems here for a little while. The Rule 34 questions were last week. That's not a puzzle, it's pushing blocks. I will accept confidently sounded episode numbers and issue numbers as actual evidence. But I want to hear about your other shitty character. Of course, invest in a robotic flavor flame. This is the Debate This Podcast. Welcome to Debate This, the show where no one is right, but someone is definitely wrong. In this podcast, we take time out of our busy adult lives to argue over the important things like comics, video games, and who should play Adam Warlock in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. It's Glenn Howerton, because he is a golden god, and his rage knows no bounds. My name is Todd Thomas, and I'll be your moderator for this week. Today we're talking about a topic that I care very little about, Pokemon. Specifically, the part of every game where most people hunger for, the obscure gym trainers that represent weird stereotypes. To argue who will be a great addition to the next installment of gym trainers, I have Kyle, the Santa Claus Harper, Matt, Wild Hogs Cole, and Andrew, Jungle to Jungle Henderson. Gentlemen, why don't you take it away? All right, so I've been playing Pokemon since it crossed the Pacific and blessed the world with Pokemon Red. Um, I have played every release there since, usually picking it up on release day. Um, I did not take. Yeah, I did God. not. <laughs> I did not take a break after Gen Three, like my compatriots. In fact, in high school, my friend group all leaned really hard into Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, and our senior year was more or less spent playing those games. Um, so I probably have forgotten more about Pokemon than any of you, and I'm <laughs> not gonna be shy about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is this is really what Kyle's been preparing for this entire this, podcast. Yeah, this we is... forced Kyle to talk about a lot of things he has no idea about. <laughs> yeah. and here he yeah. is swinging for the fences. Yeah. Well, and what's fun is that I've only ever played red and blue, and I played a little bit of yellow, so I don't know shit about anything. So I'm excited to hear all these things that I don't understand. Let me look real quick. Yeah, so you're not going to know any of the Pokemon. Yeah, so my, what I need from chair. you, if you start referencing <laughs> specific places and Pokemans, then I need to hear descriptions of them, what they yeah. look like. Okay. Todd, if you don't already have it pulled up, I'm going to go ahead and send you to Bulbapedia, yeah, Bulbapedia. Yeah. which is like yeah. the, the Mario the wiki, wiki of the Pokemon world. Is that spelled um, P-A-E-D-I-A? Did we decide that? <laughs> Bulbapedia. <laughs> 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 it's that smushed together AE that, uh, that you only see in fantasy games. Oh, hang on, I got a Staples ad. I'm going to watch this first. <laughs> Alright, no, Kyle, Kyle, keep, please keep talking. Um, so, participants of my gym will be greeted outside by a spinning candy-striped pole. Um, if they don't leave with a badge, they'll at least leave with a fresh cut, because my gym is also the coolest and best barbershop in the Johto region. Nice. So it's not just full of things that I don't care about. I can get a sweet haircut. You can at least get a sweet cut. All right. Yes. Well, that's at least 50% of the things that happen in that building I care about. So <laughs> let's uh, let's pass the ball over to Matt. Matt, what do you got for us? Uh, so I was the biggest of the Pokemon fans. Uh, and then Gen 4 happened. And for one reason or another, I just hopped off the train. Like pretty much the rest of the Pokemon fan base. Uh, but that being said, it's common knowledge that things get progressively worse with every sequel. Uh, you can ask that talking raptor from Jurassic Park 3 who says Alan. Um, but I'm still pretty confident uh, in my gym, which consists only of Mons from the first three generations. And I'm going to coin the term Mons because I don't think that's used enough in the Pokemon fan base. Um, I, uh, I believe the best gyms are the ones that make those hunting for its badge the most uneasy and out of their element. Uh, and unfortunately, Andrew picked his theme before I could pick mine. Yeah. And I think bugs are gross, so I needed something that makes everyone really uncomfortable. I landed on Crazy Cat Ladies, and that's what I'm going to go with. All right, so your aesthetic is Cat Ladies. Um, you know, that's probably hitting part of our demographic, so let's let's go with that. I like it. Andrew, how are you going to round us out today with your Pokemon experience? Yeah, so um, similar to Kyle, I was in, and Kyle and Matt, I was in day one. I had I had red on my little Game Boy Pocket. Um, I was, uh, this this says I was down to do butt stuff for the next two gens, even though 
I don't remember <laughs> that being part of the history. But... It was a crazy time between yeah, those it, was a, it was a weird time. It was a weird nine time. Year old, um, nine year old Henderson was wild. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then I went to, I actually finished the Pokedex. I got all 250, 251 uh, on my silver cart. Um, which I remember, the, like... The phrase, I finished my Pokedex of yeah. 251 in my original silver cart, silver cart is the nerdiest sentence said in this yeah. podcast thus far. I'm pretty sure it's not. I mean, <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, we we talked extensively about the Sonic Universe lore, yeah. so uh, you can, yeah. you can yep. shut your trap. Um, <laughs> let's see, I did Gen 3 when it came out, I had on my GBA, uh, and then after that, by the time I was, like, late high school, early college, I just wasn't playing video games, and that was around when Gen 4 came out. Um, I dropped off for a while, but I actually got back in once I got a 3DS uh, about a year before X and Y came out. Um, I was pretty pumped about that. So I bought a 3DS to catch up. So I bought uh, Black 2 and caught up on Gen 5 and then had, have been back in since uh, 6 and 7. So mine are going to be similar to my memories. I know the first two gens and the last two gens very well, and the middle's kind of a mix, or middle's kind of a... Uh, a little bit of a blur, so kind of like my college. gem is going to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, kind of like college. So um, my gem is going to be definitely representative of that. Um, my two favorite types are fire and ghost type. So I kind of developed a theme gem around that, and my own persona that incorporates both of that. Um, basically, in, in my elevator speeches, I have crafted or I have concocted a Scooby Doo villain. <laughs> Good. I just, Excellent. I really just imagine Andrew's gym leader as like an emo kid in the corner flicking a Zippo lighter. Yes, like exactly. <laughs> to to um, give to give an update on the Bulbapedia, if you search haircuts, apparently on Sundays in the Goldenrod Tunnel, younger haircut brother gives Pokemon haircuts. Yep. So and uh, oh. the younger brother's haircuts aren't as good. And your Pokemon's happiness doesn't go up as much as the older brother. Shut up, you nerd. <laughs> oh my God. Before, before Todd takes us to somewhere actual, I'm really curious about like the important thing here. Um, so you guys both started with red. I started with blue. Who was your first starter? Like, how much are we going to fight today? Yeah, I went Charmander. Yeah, I'm also a team Charmander. Yeah. Ah. Uh, Bulbasaur, because Blastoise is the ultimate of the of the final like level three evolution. Bulbasaur, because because you Bulbasaur can't handle becomes, a real challenge. Uh, Bulbasaur <laughs> becomes Venusaur. Venusaur. Todd. But, uh, oh, I meant Squirtle. I meant Squirtle. You mean Squirtle? You, I was I was so focused on how Bulbasaur is such a bad choice that I just kept sit, I saw red and said Bulbasaur, but it's Squirtle because Blastoise is a turtle with cannons coming out of his back. That's right. Yeah, I too was yeah, Squirtle so Squad. They, damn it, we had shirts. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's let's get into the real meat of this. So, what we're here to talk about. Obviously, the most important aspect of the Pokemon Gym is the strange and obscure stereotype of the leader who runs it. Um, you know, when you think back to that, it's always the character that slides into the screen in the battle and he's some weird stereotype. So, tell me about your gym leader and what brought them to this dedicated life of training Pokemon. All right, so... Gym leader Kyle, um, just the, the gym leader version of myself, I guess, um, began his Pokemon journey on the Alolan Islands uh, with his trusty Alolan version of Geodude. I don't um, know what that word means. Stop. So Pause. the Alolan region <laughs> is the, the region um, in the Sun and Moon games, and they have um, alternate versions of the original Kanto Pokemon. And in this, so in this one, um, Geodude is a rock electric type. Um, it's it's just Geodude with little stubbly peach fuzz hair. Yes. So creative. So like reskinning an enemy in like a side-scrolling fighting game. Pretty much. Okay. That's what, uh -huh. That he's, was the gimmick for. He's the movie. he's the blue Moblin instead of the red Moblin. Good. Well, they're they're better. <laughs> um. So so Pokemon trainer Kyle completed the island challenges, which are that version's uh po Pokemon gyms, and uh grew his humble Geodude into a full grown. Alolan Golem, which I am going to just send you the picture of, Todd, in the group. Um, he you has ready, this, didn't you? <laughs> I sure did. He has this magnificent, like, old oh, world shoot. Russian beard and he mustache. He does look awesome. Yeah, that's um, yeah, he's pretty cool. So, as far as the Alolan Pokemon go, Golem was one of the better ones for certain. Yeah, his his um, eyebrows are so serious, and he's got like a, like a, like a Wario mustache. Yes. <laughs> It's, I just love his stubby little arms. He's, miss, he's <laughs> missing. He's missing the the Russian fur hat to be complete. 
a, the complete image, but um, so stunned by this this fabulous facial fur, um, Jim Leader Kyle then swore his life, making sure anyone who wanted to could have an equally impressive impressive chin tickler, and went out to learn the trade. Um, working hard, he set up a shop in Goldenrod City, which you may or may not remember is in Johto, um, and opened the most popular barber shop in the Pokemon universe. Um, then he wanted to get back to his first love of Pokemon battling, added some extensions onto his shop, and became a Pokemon gym leader. I don't think Kyle can push his glasses up any harder than they are right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. my, my pocket protector is almost <laughs> going to burst, and uh, my bologna sandwich lunch is getting a little warm in my locker. So... <laughs> Every time I hit it hard with these like really obscure comic book references, I now I know how that feels now. Yeah. Like I've always been now, curious this is, what that this sounds is, like. This is how you how we all feel when you when you pull up your advanced Sonic lore, Matt. The deep cuts from the Archie comics. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, do, do all three of the iterations of Gollum have facial hair? Is that a thing? So Geodude, I think, has um, like head stubble. Graveler. Head Stubble was my ska band in, in high school. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke we're going to make every week, guys. Um, Graveler's got, got a really intense mono brow going on with some mutton chop looking dealies. And then Graveler is full, or Golem, I'm sorry, is full uh, mustache beard um, ready to survive the winter. <laughs> It is it is a serious beard. Um, so so changing changing gears from there. So Matt, um, let's hear a bit about what you've got going on, and hopefully it's not quite as tied to a barbershop uh, aesthetic. Uh, so I'm going to tell you the story of gym leader Martha because I am most certainly not part of this gym. I am only here to promote the chaos. Um, <laughs> gym leader Martha is the most horrifically stereotypical crazy cat lady you've ever seen. Like, you know what this gym smells like by this strangely <laughs> overgrown but intentional-looking landscaping and the overwhelming presence of light pink floral plush pillows in the bay windows. <laughs> They're necessary, all of them. Um, Martha smells pretty much like that, too. Uh, she never really became a Pokemon trainer. When her husband died, she used all of his money to buy the large abandoned gym in her town. She planned on turning it into a cat sanctuary with her Absol by her side. She started collecting all of her feline friends. Unfortunately, league rules state that occupied gyms must offer badges to those who choose to challenge the owner of the gym. So she battles anyone who comes through the door as long as they take off their shoes and wipe their feet on the carpet. Are, are her badges <laughs> Werther's original candies? Um, I was between the hard uh, cream saver swirlies and just a, an empty pack of Marlboro cigarettes. I haven't decided which one it is. <laughs> or they're, they're root beer barrels. They're things Ooh, like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the hard caramel squares. Oh, God. Sounds like Martha's a real, a real trip. Sounds like she's got a lot going for her in her husband's legacy. So I, I, gonna, I would agree. a little bit. Is that Sola Cat? Oh, we gonna... oh, we get weird. We get real weird. I only had three gens to work with, and the cat family doesn't come in until the fourth gen. Um, so, you know, when I was a kid, I thought Absol was a cat because I thought it was the coolest looking Pokemon um, oh, since Sand Slash. A, it's a dope looking Pokemon, but yeah, I'll, like, I'll, I'll if, allow it. If you if you look at Mega Absol, it's really just like a, a much sassier looking Absol. And it doesn't with, it get feathers or something? Yeah, yeah feathers like and an emo yeah. hair comb I, over. I like it's, the idea that it's not necessarily their cats; it's that cat lady Martha thinks they are. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the whole concept. That's yeah. what I'm going for because I've read Great. enough news stories about some lady who's really confused why the cat that she has keeps getting into the trash and then it turns out it's not a cat it's a raccoon it's but a she's raccoon. thought it's a cat uh, um uh, so that was I'm, I'm leaning into this cat lady uh, thing really hard martha's gross. like she doesn't see very well she doesn't breathe very well she moves <laughs> around a little bit like I, uh, she uses, she uses Can the we move moves on, that like, don't do damage Matt, like Matt too has, much man like, has a dementia themed um pokemon gym so that's that's healthy that's good <laughs> now i'm just sad <laughs> All right, Andrew, uh, we heard from these two guys. What do okay. you have as far as what you're bringing? Yeah, so gym leader Andrew, uh, always, as a kid, always had an interest in the occult. 
uh, when he was uh, when he was young, he didn't really get along with the other the other kids. He it was a bit of a loner. Uh, he would at night ride his pony tie out to the local cemetery and uh, would read himself ghost stories. Much like uh, Martha. Mar- <laughs> much like Martha. <laughs> um, his uh, his hometown was uh, a host to a world famous carnival. Uh, where people would come from all over the Kalos region. Uh, Kalos is the world from Gen 6, X and Y. Appreciate that. Thank you. You got it. Um, as of, Unfortunately, as uh, GL Andrew uh, grew into an adult, the carnival, uh, carnival fell on hard times and uh, was eventually closed and abandoned. Um, as a result, industry left and uh, tourism effectively halted and uh, essentially drying out the economy. Um, as a result, gym leader Andrew vowed to do something about his once thriving home. So, so uh, he so he opened up a horror fanfic themed gym. So he's yep. out for <laughs> exactly. So he turned straight up Scooby Doo villain, <laughs> and uh, he created a persona. So uh, he decided he would uh, he would start taking his now adult rapidash out late at night and uh, masquerade as the headless horseman. Uh, God so damn! Right. <laughs> how how loudly how loudly does he play um, Johnny Cash's Ghost Riders in the Sky during the battle? <laughs> Only sometimes. Uh, so imagine seeing uh, a man in a heavy trench coat riding atop a flaming steed um, with a pumpkin with eyes uh, atop on top of the trench coat, um, which is his which is his lovable pumpkaboo. Which is a, a haunted pumpkin Pokemon, also from Gen Six. I I saw that movie and I liked it better when it was starring Nick Cage. <laughs> did you? We already did that. We already did Nick Cage. Okay, kids so no, so, so I've got I've got kind of an idea of what you're what you're bringing to the table. So let's let's set the scene. Matt kind of already set the smell, but I want to get some visuals <laughs> in here as well. So. Um, you know, what does your gym look like? Aesthetics matter. So give me the physical characteristics and, and like the obstacles that litter the battlefield and give your Pokemon advantages in the fights that ensue. Um, so I already, I already mentioned my barbershop candy striped pole out front. Cool. Um, it is, you walk in and it is a, a legit operation. It is a full barbershop, um, very well-trained, um, creative, knowledgeable um, hairdressers and stylists on the main floor. That part is as legit as the gym. Um, you go to the back, walk through the, the hairdressing floor, go to the back, and you are met with the gym. Um, you, you face three trainers um, who will give your Pokemon a wash, cut, and dry. <laughs> uh, a water-themed trainer, a blade-themed trainer, and a fire-themed trainer. Which um, one, this, uh, real quick, which one of those is Ice Cube and which one is Cedric the Entertainer and which one is a third person from the Barbershop movie that I can't think of? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna do us both a favor, Todd, and act like you, I didn't hear that question and just keep, <laughs> keep going. Um, so once you beat these three trainers, uh, the floor kind of will open up. You have to slide down a gigantic red spiral slide. Um, to a basement battle battle floor where you will face me. Um, Kyle, <laughs> Kyle just Kyle just recreated uh, Chili, Silent, and Cress from uh, Gen Five. Who are they? Were chefs who are who are fire, grass, and water trainers that you all face at one time. I googled that earlier, and I know that they are a thing. Um, my my three pre. Pre gym leader trainers will not be using uh, the the pan pour pan sage or uh, what's the pan, fire one? pan fire <laughs> or pan. the fire one. They will yeah. be using their own um, much better <laughs> unique Pokemon. <laughs> How do you incorporate the blue disinfecting water that you're not supposed to drink, but it looks so delicious? That that's the that's the water on the gigantic red slide that you go down. It's you you slide down a water slide um, filled with Barbasol. Oh God. So so my my personal grooming feels pretty good after that. Matt, what do you have to make me feel way more dirty now? <laughs> oh, oh, dirty is a way that you're gonna feel um, <laughs> dirty with four arms. <laughs> yeah. Let me let uh, me paint a picture here for you, boys. Um, did y'all have that aunt that you were forced to visit like once a year, 
and you didn't really like her, but it wasn't her necessarily that you had a problem with. It was just kind of the way her house smelled. Like, it was this God. strange combination of cat urine, mothballs, and Marlboros. Um, and there wasn't really anywhere to sit. Like, there were, there were way too many couches, but most of them were really scratched and kind of moist and occupied <laughs> by cats. Whose names you certainly didn't remember, but Aunt Smells Real Bad knew the names of the cats <laughs> so, better than the names of the cousins. So your gym leader is just Aunt Gail from Bob's Burgers. Yeah, is yeah, like what you're telling me. Everything is a pastel floral pattern. There are lace doilies on all the tables. There are ashtrays stacked on magazines, and it might be magazines stacked on ashtrays, but you can't really tell. Um, ashtrays. Ashtrays. <laughs> That's um, a whole other nightmare. And th there was that like really gross avocado green kind of yellow colored shag carpet and porcelain figures everywhere. Um, just Does she collect clowns. <laughs> I, I was thinking of like the little the little family ones, um, and it was it's like a brother and a sister who do sweet pure things, and they have little figurines. Oh, of them. oh, the I precious memories. The yes, precious yeah. moments. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, just think of that house. But with some Pokemon battle lines taped on the carpet, like that's 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 the whole gym. Um, like like when your like when your church would change its auditorium to a, a gym by taping down like masking tape. Gym <laughs> yeah. This is, now, it's, it's this the is now this is now the foul thing. line. Exactly. This is about where the foul line is. Yes. Yeah. What? That's that's exactly the aesthetic I'm going for. Um, What's her sprite look like, Matt? Uh, What's her sprite look like? You've seen <laughs> yeah. Beauty and the Beast, right? Um, you know yeah. the the feather duster from Beauty and the Beast? Imagine yeah. a sprite of that, but like green and yellow. Um, <laughs> like, just kind of weirdly bulbous on the bottom and something that's clearly a dress, but you can't really tell the figure of the, the shape. I, I want to get back to the to the mental image of this like older woman being startled because someone actually came to her door to battle her. And like laying down the lines of teaming, just a second, we're going to do this in a minute. <laughs> that's, like, and that's really what I'm like. Some of the lines stay down because once they're on the carpet, it's really hard to get them back off. But other lines are just kind of like folded up, and like you have to brush newspaper away, and like she makes you take your shoes off. But there's there's definitely <laughs> cat litter in the carpet, and so when you're more walking a around, it's punishment to you and like, not a thing to help the house. Yeah, you can just kind of feel the crunch between your toes, and you, it, <laughs> it like it gets in the space between your toes, and you wish that it didn't, but it's there, and there's just not really like you dig your toes in there to make it stop, but it just makes it worse. How, how this strong is, is this? Is the a heart of darkness smell. level. Yeah. <laughs> what was that, Kyle? How, How strong is the ammonia smell oh, in the house? Oh, it's so strong. It's that, like, she, you know, like, there's... Are my eyes watering? There's a glass panel door and a wooden door, and she opens the wooden door, and before the glass panel door opens, you <laughs> immediately smell it. Just immediately. And then you spend the whole time, like, trying your best not to take a deep breath, because you got to breathe, but you just don't want to. I um I can I can taste it. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. I taste it. This is as close to ASMR as I've ever gotten. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Matt now invites you to uh subscribe to his ASMR podcast, uh Tales from the Greenhouse on the End of the Street. <laughs> it's really just him taking a handful of kitty litter and pushing it up against the microphone back and forth. It's <laughs> quite soothing. You'll get them chills. Thank you for coming to debate this theater. <laughs> All right, so I've so I'm I'm sliding down the Barbasol slide, and I literally feel like I have kitty litter in my toes right now as I move them. Um, Andrew, what what weird level of uncomfort are you going to give me? I got a lot. So uh, so the <laughs> abandoned carnival. Uh, we'll I'll set the scene. There's going to be a series of traps that the challenger has to overcome uh, in order to reach uh, me, the gym leader, who is situated in the main tent. Obviously. There's a lot of showmanship here, a lot of uh, a lot of smoke and mirrors. Um, the first of which is going to be a hall of mirrors. Um, and and really, when I was thinking of like how to incorporate Pokemon, I tried to think of there are some pretty horrifying Poke Pokedex entries, and I'm sure you guys have some of you may have seen the 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 stories of the articles. Um, I'm going to read some of my favorites that, that are incorporated. So my first is a hall of mirrors, uh, illuminated by lampants, who are uh, sentient lamps essentially from Gen Five. Um, 
But the one of their their Pokedex entry is uh, it, the spirits it absorbs fuel its baleful fire. It hangs around hospitals waiting for people to pass on. Jesus. <laughs> so <laughs> the this ghost Hall of Pokemon Mirrors are dark. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's crazy. So imagine walking in this Hall of Mirrors. You don't know which way is in, which way is out. All of a sudden, these sentient lights start lighting up one at a time, just waiting for you to drop dead. I don't want to imagine that. I would. Can we go back to imagining the ammonia sadness? <laughs> so the second, so the second trap. Uh, then you make it to a uh, roller coaster. Um, as you as you approach the roller coaster, you see just an empty car with a big stuffed like teddy bear, like something that you would see like as a carnival prize. So the trainer gets in, and uh, all of a sudden the lights turn on, and there's a little face that pops up in the roller coaster cart, and it's uh, a Rotom. Uh, Rotom, who is a little electric ghost Pokemon who can possess other machine uh, machinery. So there's like a toaster Rotom and a refrigerator Rotom and a, a lawnmower Rotom. Um, so the Rotom uh, possesses the roller coaster and starts going. Uh, as you start going up the uh, up the track, you notice that the teddy bear next to you is not just a teddy bear, but it is a beware, which is <laughs> which is from Gen Seven, which is a giant. Pokemon teddy bear. Um, <laughs> but this teddy bear <laughs> is not there a teddy bear. already a giant Pokemon bear from the first Yeah, generation? that would be that uh, would be Teddy Ursula. Ursula. Oh Jesus. Yeah. Okay, nerds, calm yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for let's what talk about No, uh, for what it's worth, Beware looks more like what I think a furry's idea of Teddy Ursula might look like. Like yeah. it looks like somebody in a costume wearing bunny ears. Beware he, looks kinda like this... something out of Five Nights at Freddy's, but also yeah, his, de his design is marginally unfinished. Ooh, like, it's just kind ooh. of like a brown blob. Yeah, yeah it's kind of um, like they stopped at everything below the nose. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, favorite, my favorite description is, this Pokemon has the habit of hugging its companions. Many trainers have left this world after their spines were squashed by its hug. <laughs> Jesus. The, the, just the, like, the voice, hug me, comes into brain. Yeah. So, oh. so while you ride the nightmare-possessed roller coaster, a, a sentient teddy bear will hug you to death. Oh, um, God. <laughs> as you, so uh, once the roller coaster ride comes to an end, you leave. Uh, you walk closer toward the center of the carnival. Uh, you play some carnival games. You know, yeah, that you, sounds you fun. throw you throw the rings, you throw the darts, and, and you win a prize. You get a selection of a prize. Uh, Todd, you get to pick between a dusty balloon or an old grimy doll. What would you pick? Ooh. Um. Well, I know the doll is bad, so I gotta think the dusty balloon is less bad. Surprise, sure. the balloon's also bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, the balloon is actually a Drifloon. Uh, oh, that waiting. sounds great, though. Now, if you look up Drifloon, on, on, it I'm looks like... doing it. Yeah, it, it looks like a purple balloon with a little whipped cream hat. Oh, yeah, that's um, pretty. I like it. Yeah, it looks it looks super nice and, yeah. and fun. I'm sure like, there's oh, nothing yeah. nefarious about this. Absolutely nothing horrifying. Um, uh, the only thing that I will say is stories do go that it grabs the hands of small children and drags them away to the afterlife. Fuck. <laughs> postscript, postscript, it dislikes heavy children. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. We haven't, we haven't really alienated a minority population yet, so here we yeah. are. So, uh, so you've, you fought off your, your Drifloon captor, and, uh, you finally made it to, um, the main event tent which we'll, we'll cover in just a second. Um, you see, through the whole time, you see, you notice a shadowy figure uh, overhead every once in a while, and, and you hear uh, the hoot of an owl um, as you walk into the tent, uh, and then we'll, we'll say TBD to the next question. Good. Um, <laughs> that went to some dark places. <laughs> um, I, uh... Okay, so, so you, you all kind of started, and especially with Andrew there at the end, started to talk about some of the... Pokemon that, that you're obviously bringing to the table. Um, so Andrew talked a lot about traps. You talked about some of your sidekicks and some of the other answers. I want to know what your lineup looks like. Um, so, you know, why, who did you choose? Who did your gym leader choose? And also, why is it going to be better than the other teams that could come at you? So specifically the other two in the party here. Um, and I appreciate what you've been doing but I'm going to remind you, if you're giving me B-list, deep-cut Pokemon, just continue to reference what they look like and give me time to Google them. Do you, do you identify deep-cuts at anything that isn't the original 151? 
Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm just going to so go with that. So. And uh, we, so, so we need basically to describe purchase. all our Pokemon. So, so yeah. if, basically, basically, if you were to play the game of who's that Pokemon after like 1996, I cannot win. <laughs> I, will, I will not win. So, so yeah, um, what does your team look like? And, you know, why would they be better than, than the other people's teams? So we're going to start with you, Kyle. Um, so my team um, has the, in, on top of having fantastic facial hair, um, also has the benefit of being roughly rock-based. Um, so it, I, I will be a rock-type gym leader um, with my trusty Alohan Golem, who has been with me from the beginning. Um, the, well, the one normal type on my team will be a Stoutland, which I'm going to send you the picture, Todd. Um, I'm already in like Bulbapedia. A... I'm, I'm ready for you. I'm, I'm okay. looking at Stoutland and that is like a dog. It is a, it is a, a dog with a magnificent trailing mustache that just like <laughs> blonde flowing behind it mustache. Yeah, it's, it's majestic. It's very majestic. Um, uh. Then after Stoutland, it will have Probopass, um, which has a gigantic red nose and a nice bushy Mario type, Mario esque mustache. It is a lot of that. This Pokemon it's, is it's like sixty percent mustache. Yeah, I, was gonna say, I, I, I think that it's such I a think weird. Probopass was in Super Mario Odyssey. As I'm looking at the picture, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he had sunglasses. Oh, you mean the little sunglasses oh, yeah. guy? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, wait, for whatever wait, reason. I'm reading, I'm, I'm reading about the biology of Probopass. Um, it, it, it has three small objects on the side and back called mini-noses. Yes. And it's able to control these mini-noses yes. to catch prey and attack opponents from all three directions. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Good. Terrifying stuff. Um, and then, um, so then... With we have Golem, Stoutland, Probopass. Um, we'll move on to Metagross, a gigantic steel monster with a huge X on its face. That familiar with that one? Yeah, looks looks roughly mustachioed. <laughs> um, if your mustache and your eyebrows could connect at your nose somehow, granted, that is what you have. Granted, he's mostly there to to add a little power to the team, but I I feel he fits. He's got. He's got some face ornamentation. I feel like that's um, a bit of a stretch for facial hair, but fine. No, well, yeah. well, you know, on it, it's fine. You really, I gotta <laughs> give you credit because you put together a team of really impressive facial hair, but Metagross leaves a lot to be desired. Mm -hmm. I think you just wanted a really strong Pokemon yeah. in there. I, <laughs> I won't lie. Metagross is just <laughs> there. Kyle, However, Kyle's definitely playing the meta. We're gonna bring it home because I get to round my team out with two. Dinosaur Pokemon that have facial facial hair, which is just the best thing in the world. Um, so we have Tyrantum, which is a T Rex with a nice uh, old man beard, and Mega Aerodactyl, which is the Mega version of Aerodactyl, and he gains a uh, a nice pointy yeah. goatee. Todd, so, for you, that's um, Santa Claus T Rex and the lead singer of System of a Down. That's who those two people are. <laughs> no, that is that is fair. I see this here. Um, yeah, no, that's, it is the lead singer of System of the Down. <laughs> He's got that good, good pointy Jafar beard. Um, and, and those six, which, Metagross, I could be talked into changing if you guys really don't think that X on his face counts as facial hair, but those six are gonna, they're gonna show you the, the power, uh, a good beard will, will give to your team. Over and over again. I want to. I, I want to say something, and I, I would love for people to tell Kyle like why those choices are wrong. But I am currently flipping back and forth between um, uh, Aerodactyl and Mega Aerodactyl. That is some <laughs> lazy copy editing. That is what that is. They they literally just added pointy rocks on a couple different spots. So here's the thing about Mega Evolutions. Like some of them are really cool, like uh, Charizard X. And some of them are really lame, like Charizard Y. I didn't know that. Ha so why? Okay, sorry. We're gonna we're gonna change here for a second. I mean, so I might have it backwards, but Kyle Charizard X is the dragon type that turns yeah, okay, black yeah, yeah. and is yeah. awesome looking. And Charizard yeah. Y is Let's the one that looks like, like he just gets bigger wings. He just gets bigger wings, but is actually <laughs> yeah. the better of. Them. And like, but no, yes. Charizard Y has wings on his hands. Wouldn't that just like not be good? 
Right. He's all winged out, Todd. Don't ask questions. <laughs> all winged it's out. It's Pokemon. Right. I just, I, I, I don't, I wasn't part of this world. And so I don't understand it, but it sounds like no one really understands it. And we've all just accepted it. Yep. We That's all basically un- the tagline for Pokemon. No one understands it. We all just yeah. accept it. <laughs> After the ice cream cone, cone in the trash bag, we all just had to agree to not ask questions anymore. There is a seal called Seal in Gen 1. I don't want to hear anything complaining about the ice cream cone. <laughs> hey, Gen 5 also has a humanoid holding steel beams, and they call him Gerder. No. Yeah, they do. Gen 5 was a weird one, to be fair. How do you, how do you spell Gerder? G I R D I G I R D E R and wow you're right it is literally just a person <laughs> holding a steel beam. Yep. <laughs> I learned something today. Yeah. If you want to throw shade at, at vanilla, you should uh What is you should this? look at the full breath. Now granted, that is not any less lazy a design than like Machoke. So Yeah. No. No. I mean that, no, well, that was the thing with Pokemon, bad. right? It was like the the first generation was not even at all more creative. <laughs> just yeah. that they, it's just we were they, nine. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was just different. We time. had more creativity on the inside to accept their lack of creativity on the outside. Yes. Wait, wait, Girder evolves from Timber? Yes. Yep. This and is bullshit. Into... Conkledur. Conkledur? Conkledur. <laughs> Conkledur. <laughs> it... Girder looks like a really buff Mewtwo with a steel beam over its head. Yeah, it's like Kid Boo from Dragon Ball Z. So it's after <laughs> after we after we do our um, bonus content of Todd streaming uh, Mario RPG, we need to yeah. have Todd stream the most recent edition of Pokemon oh, and have shit, him react awesome. to all the new Pokemon. This is so yeah. bullshit. I, these are these are not even real. That's gonna be like a whole new world for Todd. Okay, no, can okay, so so <laughs> Kyle has a facial hair based. Pokemon team, and I actually, the one was a T-Rex with a beard, and it had that weird, like, vulture cowl, which I really was into. Um, Matt, what is uh, your old lady Martha? Is that what you called her? <laughs> yeah, um, Martha. What is what is Martha bringing to, to the abandoned warehouse of sadness? Well, in case it wasn't, you know, telescoped, or telescoped is the wrong word, telegraphed, uh, well enough, it's cats. It's most <laughs> definitely cats. <laughs> um, so to give you something that you may be familiar with, but probably forgot because he's probably one of the most lackluster characters of the first 151 Pokemon and is really only important to be the like footrest for the leader of Team Rocket. We're going to have a Persian. Yeah, I got um, that one. Yeah, so we've got a Persian. Uh, it's a cat and that ends my thought process as to why Martha has a Persian. Um, Speaking of cats that we have, uh, we have a Del Caddy, um, which is like a poodle cat, but is most definitely still a cat. Um, Then we get into, we get into things that are slightly less cats, but I didn't have a lot to work with, so we're gonna call them cats. (laughs) The first of which being an Espeon, which I am well aware is an EV evolution, an evolution, as those in the Pokemon world may say. Um, but after looking at all of the evolutions, is definitely the most cat-like evolution. Um, <laughs> so we went with an Espeon. Uh, and then the Absol is the main Pokemon. That's that's their Pikachu of this gym. Um, and I really think Absol is a cat. I was reading the Bulbapedia uh, entry. And it does say that Absol has a feline face, it's, it's and a, so I'm... It's a nondescript, like, four-legged mammal that looks enough like a cat that that it's fine. Exactly. Uh, you know, yeah. it, like, <laughs> it, if, it, if it looks remotely like a cat, fuck it, it's a cat! <laughs> I, um, do, I do want to point out the, the restriction to the first three generations is solely your own, and there are some really great cats in the there generations are like a you shit cut ton yourself of cats. out of. There are so many cats. But I know. I, I As I started looking at other generations, <laughs> I realized how many cats exist outside of the first three generations. Well, and I thought to myself... Well, go ahead, Todd. Well, right. I'm, I'm excited to hear how you're rounding out the team with what are likely going to also be completely normal cats, right? Um, actually, this is where we get away from the cats. Um, <laughs> so, after those first four, I really ran out of cats. I, I want to hear your justification 
I, I think it's the next one you're gonna do, but I want I, but I'll. I really want to hear your justification for for this one. For for jump love. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, have you guys ever seen a mothball? <laughs> 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 Jump Luff is effectively three little mothballs. And every crazy cat lady has mothballs. I mean, at least every every not, crazy cat lady that I've ever met has mothballs. You're not which is, wrong. Which is too many. So by that logic, you should put a trubbish in there, because every crazy cat lady also is, has tons of trash in their place. Yeah, but that's outside of the first three generations, so that's, <laughs> oh, fair that's outside of my self-imposed <laughs> restrictions. Wait, wait. This, this, I, sorry, I'm searching Trubbish now. This is Pokemon He's the trash 5, bag. 568 yeah. that is literally a sad trash bag. Yeah, what the turns, fuck is going on? Gen, gen, like, gen 5 is not iterative of the rest of... It's, it's not a good representation of the rest of the franchise. There's just a writer with, like, an, uh, an artist with a dictionary being screamed at to make more Pokemon. And he's just, like, crying and sketching. And, like, yeah, they won't yeah. feed him until he gives them more ideas. Gen, gen 5 that, is kind of like the Stephen King of Pokemon. It was like, uh, now a lamp is haunted! <laughs> I, so I specifically remember, like, I had... I had games for the first three generations. In fact, I think I had multiple games in all of the first three generations. And then I missed in four. I don't think really intentionally. Oh, I just, see, like, that was the cat generation. You missed out there. <laughs> yeah, well, and I did, because there literally there, there's a family of cats in Gen 4. But I, I didn't get a Gen 4 game. And then I remember thinking, oh, well, when Gen 5 comes out, maybe I'll hop in in Gen 5. And then seeing the Gen 5 Pokemon, I was like, you know, maybe I won't. Maybe I'm just gonna live with my glory days. Um, so then I went uh, back to my first three generations. And so my sixth Pokemon is Zangoose, who is not at all a cat. But if but you more of a mongoose. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> but like I was talking about earlier with cat ladies with raccoons and skunks that they think are cats, if please just look at the like look at the main picture of Zangoose. Like, does he not look exactly like an animal that would be accidentally treated as a... Like, he has the face of an animal that has been being treated like a cat for the last couple months. It and looks he's like an animal that walks in and, be and says, like, is drinking your milk and eating your food. And you're like, what are you doing? It's like, fuck you, I'm a cat. Like, yeah. you're like, okay, man, you're, you're a cat. I guess, God. So the, the way that I imagine this is that, like, there was a Zangoose out back of the gym rummaging through trash and Martha saw it and thought it was a stray cat and so brought it inside and has been forcefully treating it like a cat for the last couple months and the Zangoose doesn't really love it but is also enjoying the free food and shelter so he's just kind of riding this out for a little while <laughs> um and so that's Seeing where how he far comes it into can the picture. Take this. yeah uh-huh exactly uh Kyle uh check my math but I think you can basically wreck Matt's entire gym with one fighting Pokemon. Oh, he, yeah. yeah. Espeon. Espeon will, as a psychic type. Oh, psychic, okay. Yeah, oh, I was thinking um, of Umbreon. Umbreon is the dark type. Um, okay. so are Espeon are, will are take cat out type that. Pokemon weak to fighting type Pokemon? Well, no, he has an entire team type. of normal, except one psychic type and then a grass flying type. Jumbluff oh. is gr grass flying. A weakness, so. normal Pokemon have a weakness to being fought. <laughs> Yes. Also, yes. listen, I'm not here for a long time. I'm just here for a good time. <laughs> He's not so, playing the Sari B meta. So before so to, to recap, we've got cats, cats, cat, cat, kinda cat, moth mothball situation, and then David Bowie raccoon. So <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah. I guess I guess I Andrew, like... what do you what do you what do you okay. have? Actual new, actual new bonus yeah. content idea. Just have Todd try to describe <laughs> every Pokemon after Gen 1. <laughs> in a similar vein to David Bowie Raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, alright, well, let's go back to horrifying uh, Carnival Inn. So, we have just, just left our skirmish with the, uh, with the, the captive, the captive uh, Drifloon. Um, so you walk toward the main tent, and you, uh, you see... Uh, and Alolan Marowak, which is just a Marowak, but with a bone that's on fire. That's fun. Um, and he's they like, tried. Yeah, and he's like being the, he'll be, he'll be like my fire breather. And he motions you to come inside. So you go into the main tent, and uh, it's all dark. 
and uh, all of a sudden you see one bright light at the top. It's a very uh, uh, a very nice ornate looking chandelier. And Ooh, then, that's nice and not a Pokemon at all. Not a Pokemon at all. Um, standing standing directly in the center of the tent is me, the gym leader, gym leader Andrew, atop my flaming steed. <laughs> my, my head is obscured and, and covered over top of my pumpkaboo, and I'm armed with a sword and shield. And uh, there's a there's a screaming guitar solo in the background as I <laughs> as I ride my flaming steed around. Um, so the the chandelier is actually uh, my personal favorite Pokemon, Chandelure, um, which is a haunted chandelier. Uh, and then uh, I already mentioned Rapidash and Pumpkaboo. Um, oh, my sword and shield is Aegis Aegis Slash or Aegis Aegis Slash Aegis Slash. I think Aegis Slash. Aegis Slash, which is a haunted sword and shield. Uh, and then I whistle, and uh, my my Decidueye emerges from the outside. Decidueye is a uh, is like an owl Pokemon, so he was the one watching everything, hooting uh, when you were outside. Um, so then we start this fucking epic Pokemon battle inside the the tent of many horrors. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> this this owl is like a a weird like Zoro owl. Yeah, he's and awesome. He. He shoots. Uh, he shoots feathers like arrows. He's really I wanna. Good. I wanna. I just want all the listeners to know. Um, the tent of many horrors is also what Andrew calls his bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> it, it too has chandeliers and him on a horse <laughs> and an owl that watches everything. Yeah. Oh, I. Oh, I forgot one thing. I. I. Uh, I swallow the sword as an act of intimidation. Um, I'm sticking with the carnival theme, so I'm gonna pretend to be a sword swallower. That's why the hell not. Um. Because, because the, the, the majestic people. flaming horse wasn't enough. It wasn't enough showmanship. <laughs> so I feel uh, like that's that's an improv yeah. improvisation that like gym leader Andrew thinks up on that spot. He's like, man, I've got all this cool shit. Ooh, one more bolt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining I'm imagining your character looking kind of like uh, Tuxedo Mask from uh, the Sailor Moon series. He's, like, he's very pale and very gaunt. <laughs> very gaunt, very yeah. uh, very dapper, and like uh, says <laughs> things that don't make sense, but for the yes. sake of showmanship, they mm -hmm. work. And Much like Martha, they call him out, he like runs away. Much like Martha, he too has a very distinctive smell. Like, you know what that <laughs> yeah. smell is. Yeah. He's like it's an, like, it's he's more like that a carny smell yeah. that yeah. like stale Definitely sweat. Definitely no yeah. more pleasant, but slightly less homey. <laughs> he's he's like an ineffective Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> like the Phantom so of the, the Megaplex. Have... The Phantom of the Megaplex. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So so looking at these things, the question I have then, so team composition wise. How do these teams stack up against each other? We already know that the team Cat Fancy is not maybe going to be the best one in the air. <laughs> I, I, I'm honestly just going to have to defer to Kyle, because this seems like a <laughs> Kyle question. I, I mean, I think, I think Matt and my, or not Matt and my, um, Andrew and my's teams probably would put up a fair fight. Uh, Decidui would be good against most of my team. Um, however, he does have two or three fire types, um, so mm -hmm. that does give me a, a pretty decent advantage. But my my only thing I, I don't have type coverage on is dark. Yeah, I didn't go for type coverage. I I but um, it, it it's a pretty fair fight. Although I have a, ty a T Rex with a beard, so how good can your team actually be? Well, you maybe maybe not in style points. Actually, no, I got all the style points, motherfucker. <laughs> when, I got when a flaming I asked, horse. When I asked that question, so through the Skype video, I watched Kyle, your eyes shoot back and forth across your screen, <laughs> and it was like you were crunching numbers. It's like, all ones and zeros. Via like Zach Galifianakis or like the movie Twenty One, like you're just crunching numbers and formulas. <laughs> all right, so so here's the time for the super secret bonus question. Um, so think of it like this. For every Ash, there's a Gary. For every Red, there's a Blue. Um, and these are the only two examples I have because I didn't play anything past Yellow. <laughs> and even then, I quit when Pikachu refused to evolve into a Raichu. I was so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> so my question for you and your, your gym leaders are, who is your arch nemesis? What's their story? And why are they beefing up in your turf? Um, so, I, I feel the natural 
arch nemesis of a gym leader who specializes in facial haired Pokemon and runs a barbershop be someone who maybe struggles to grow facial hair and is balding and um, is just generally unhappy about it. Um, we'll call him Todd. Oh, <laughs> he's he's gonna have uh, some. He's gonna have very smooth Pokemon. I haven't got. A, I, I, I can't. Uh, I can't round out the team. But if you if you think like a Magnet, Voltorb, it's Magneton, a Voltorb. Electrode, um, you're in the right camp. Um, he's he's just. Are there just, any comb over Pokemon? Um, um, the I'm trying to the look. One that there's, looks like Donald Trump. Lohan? The the mongoose oh, that yeah! looks like Donald oh. Trump. Um, yeah. I don't. Uh, what's it? Called? Gumshoes. Gumshoes. Or something. Oh yes. <laughs> His name is Gumshoes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the podcast is over. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> yeah, Todd. This Google. Stupid. Just Google image search Gumshoes. Skip Bulbapedia on this one. It's worth it. Shoes is spelled with two O's. Um, That's important. Why? I forgot about gum <laughs> Don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> it Why? really looks like Donald Trump. It does. All right, Kyle. In, in so the keep, most unfortunate way. Keep going about your your Captain Alopecia Universalis. That's um, the disease so, where so your Captain system Alopecia is your gonna. He's. He's gonna, um, like, he's gonna be the very ineffectual nemesis who, like, shows up and, and gives this big monologue about how it's finally time for my defeat, and, and sends out his Pokemon and, like, gets blasted off again even quicker than Team Rocket. Just every time he tries to interrupt the, the main battle going on. And like has kind of like a snidely whiplash voice and like mm, Kyle, it's time for us to do battle again and just gets <laughs> decimated every time. Uh well that's I'm forever gonna have the image of a ferret with a bad comb over burnt into my brain. Um, now imagine him in like a in a oversized three piece suit can saying, it be a zoot saying suit racist really dog whistles. <laughs> I want a I want a large now um Roger Stone zoot suit. That's what I want. <laughs> um yeah, okay, Matt. Who is the who is the I guess nemesis to Martha? Oh uh, well Martha Martha has many nemesis. Nem nemesi. <laughs> nemesis. Nemesis. Um hygiene. You know, social constructs. Um, uh, well I was gonna say No wait, stop. Real real quick, real quick, is if there is a Pokemon that is a bar of soap or a Pokemon that is like a Febreze air freshener, we're done. I'm leaving. There is a Pokemon that's a set of keys. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Clef Key. <laughs> um, Please, Matt, continue. So, so Martha has many nemeses. Um, you know, they include people like tax collectors and often her <laughs> own family. Um, anyone who at one point she was married to and is now no longer married to. Um... Also, applications to the TV show Hoarders. Um, there, there are many nemeses to Martha. I'm not sure that she has one singular rival, other than perhaps herself. I think that she may be her greatest rival. <laughs> she is or say Brian wants the battle. Yeah. Oh, this is terrible You're and like depressing. <laughs> um, all right, so let's let's hear it, Andrew. What do you what do you got? So I wouldn't say I have one arch nemesis. Is it a team of probably, them that ride in the van? I would probably say I have a set of arch nemeses who are most likely plucky young teenagers. <laughs> and who drive around in a van. In a large, in a large a dog. dog. <laughs> and uh, they're coming to challenge me because they, <laughs> they want to meddle in my affairs. Every day we stray further from the light of God. <laughs> I... I I hate this. Um, right, so I've got stuff to think about, but before I do that, I guess give me a closing statement about what your gym leader and your gym is doing and why I should care about it and why it matters and what should I do with my life after this podcast is done. Um, so at the very least, you can come to my gym and get the freshest haircut you will ever get in your life. Um, 
But if you do want to get your ass kicked by my gym leader, I'd be happy to oblige that as well. Um, as far as for what you should do after we're done recording, <laughs> you should probably go out um, and pick up a Nintendo 3DS and play Pokemon Sun or Moon. Well, yeah, I, I mean, that. yeah, okay, that's Matt. <laughs> um, so, so I, I want to talk about what makes a successful gym. Um, and, <laughs> it's, it's the dried cat pee smell and yeah. the crunchy cat litter underneath your toes. It's definitely a consistent theming. I think, I think that what makes a successful gym um, is a gym that has a long-standing record of successful defenses of badges and many trainers who come in thinking they're prepared only to find that they are far from prepared. And... Um, so when I think of if I were to walk into a gym ready to compete with a fierce gym leader and I was met by the wafting ooze of Aunt Martha, I I think that I would be too intimidated to go on and that might end my Pokemon journey there. And that, Todd, is why you should care about the Cat Fancy Gym, which I kind of <laughs> like that name. I think I, I, I kind of am kind of into it. And... Um, you know, as far as what you should do after after this podcast, I do think that if I don't, you have a cat. You have a cat, yeah, don't you? Man. Yeah, you Is... you go you go find that cat. You you hug it a little bit, and you remember <laughs> the smell of Aunt Martha. And then maybe call that weird aunt that you don't talk to often <laughs> enough and, and see aunt, how she's doing. Aunt Martha's biggest trap is a wet spot on the carpet that's always wet. <laughs> you're not you're not real sure why, but and you're you're, you're, you're afraid sure to why. ask why. It could be you know, water. You know that. But this. it also <laughs> couldn't be. <laughs> just re <laughs> remember to leave your shoes at the door. <laughs> <laughs> she just cleaned that carpet. No, she didn't. <laughs> all right, Andrew. Yeah, so I know all all of those like crazy traps and shows probably seemed uh, a little unnecessary, but look, Pokemon Pokemon is told from the perspective of a ten year old. No one is actually in danger. This is perfectly safe. The reason why Decidueye is watching from above is he's ready and waiting to take care, to, to, to save, capture any kids that go flying off into the sunset um, or whatever. Except for the really fat what, kids. What, except for the fat kid. Do you what, have a what, problem with sending kids off into the sunset at yeah, your gym? Yeah. Well, <laughs> you, know, one time. you shouldn't. Keep, there's signs not to, to lift your hands at the top of the roller coaster. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but but really what, what GLA, what Gym Leader Andrew is trying to do here is to jumpstart the economy. And what we've seen in the last six months is just an explosion in tourism. All of the, all of the crazy freaks, weirdos, and conspiracy theorists have come out of the woodwork from all over the different regions to visit, uh, to visit his town and to see the, uh, the notorious Headless Horseman riding his flaming stallion. And that's really what it's all about, is we're trying to jumpstart the economy. Gym Leader Andrew is bringing back jobs. <laughs> Small businesses can thrive again. Local diners, bookstores. Oh, so he's he's not trying to scare anyone away so he can buy up all the property in town and No, he's and, he, he, he's, he's he, not running he's not actually running a Scooby Doo villain. He's scheme. he's the noble side of Scooby Doo villains. <laughs> he he actually bought up those properties and as tourism increases, he increases yeah. his rent prices. <laughs> yeah, he actually. He's yeah, a slumlord. He, yeah, he owns the he owns the entire town. He's an eccentric slumlord. Good. Good. So this did a lot of things. Um, it taught me something about Pokemon. I'm not sure what. Um, <laughs> so while I take a second to reflect on the damage that has been done to my psyche, um, why don't you all take a second to say nice things about this? This thing that, that, that has <laughs> this been thing we all us. did together. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Matt, I got I got to give you credit. You definitely uh, painted a very um, evocative word picture. Um, I can definitely yep. most place myself in your gym. Um, well, thank you. Even if it is disgusting and depressing. <laughs> um, and Andrew, I've. I've got to give you credit for using Alohan Marowak, which is the single coolest Alohan for Alolan form Pokemon. I agree. Um, yeah, I, I mean, Kyle, I'm impressed, man. Facial <laughs> hair as a theme is not something I ever would have chosen, but I'm impressed. Because um, really, like, 
with the exception of Metagross, everybody has just phenomenal facial hair features. <laughs> and even, you know, I'll, I'll buy your argument for the Metagross X as, as the new hipster trend. I kind of dig it because I can honestly imagine a Pokemon anime where there are people walking around town with the new Metagross with that, look. With the Metagross X. That is not by any means unbelievable in the Pokemon world. <laughs> um... And, yeah, Andrew, like, I, I probably would have picked Ghosts if you didn't beat me to it. Because all of the haunted episodes and haunted things were always my favorite. Um, yeah. yeah, so I, I liked it a lot, you know. the And, like, Pokemon Creepypasta is some of the best creepypasta there is. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. And all of the, like, Pokemon Black and the haunted Pokemon games and everything just is, is good, Pokemon and I Black. like it. So um, Pokemon Black's a good one. That's yeah, a classic. That's a classic creepy pasta. Yeah. I don't know what that is, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, I, anything that delves into the weird dark corners of Pokemon, I'm all for it. It's it's that's, real good. That's weirder than the source material that talks about how Cubone's wearing his mother's skull. That that it's outside of that yeah, realm of I weirdness. Mean, everything that I said was canon today. Yeah, oh, yeah. Geez. Well that's Which like that's horrifying. how the creepy pasta of Pokemon or like that's what makes the Pokemon creepy pasta so good. Is that it's all based on actual canon things that are really mm. twisted, uh, yeah. and it's great. Um, yeah, awesome, uh, Kyle. Damn man, uh, what a team! I feel like you. When I saw this, I was like, I feel like you just started with like your team because it was like a bunch of mega evolutions <laughs> and stuff. But uh, there's one like, mega evolution. Of, there are three in here. There I, are three. I did not. Metagross. Oh, I'm sorry. Two. Metagross yeah. is a mega. Team. And and I didn't. I didn't say Mega Metagross because you're only allowed to use your That's Mega right. Stone once per battle. That's right. Um, no, but, I but way, the rules. To, way, to, way to pull it out in that with the consistent theming. Um, I love that. And uh, Tyrantrum is actually one of my one of my personal favorites. I love Tyrantrum. It's such He's a awesome. badass Pokemon. He really is. Um, Matt, your gym is an affront to all five senses. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can smell, taste, see, hear, and touch your fucking gross gym. And, uh, God, you, get, you definitely get points for, for description. Holy cow. Um, well done, both of you. Thanks. So, unfortunately, one of you did was more weller done than the other two. <laughs> And so I plan to tell you why. Um, first off, I'll just start by saying, as this got started, I'm like, nah, there will be one clear winner. There wasn't. And especially when I saw facial hair themed and cat lady themed, <laughs> I was like, nah, neither Kyle nor Matt have any dog in the fight. But that didn't end up that way. Um, but I'll go ahead and we'll we'll do reverse order on this. So... Um, unfortunately, Matt, much like, much like Andrew said, everything you did today is just offensive. Um, it, it hurt my sense of smell, my sense of taste. It hurt my heart. Um, I, I feel like I was watching the beginning of, of Up, only with a very, very different ending. Um, but I, I appreciate the detail of, of your cat-based team nonetheless. <laughs> um, and then I gotta, I gotta count out. I'm really sad to say this, but Kyle. Um, no. Yeah, uh, I, you know, you were a real contender, this, especially with Probo Pass. Um, <laughs> the, the the stone totem with more noses on the side, and then the, the why is the mustache there, Kyle? Why? <laughs> um, why? I think the the actual explanation is it's um, it's iron shavings magnetized to the metal nose to make the mustache. That's some, um, like, Willy Willy style bullshit is also is what yeah, answer. I think somebody just got it confused with a Groucho Marx picture. <laughs> that someone, like, spilled pencil shavings on that their is drawing, a, and they're so like, So, Probopass is now. a Gen 4 evolution. Um, Nosepass was introduced in Gen 2. Right? Wait... Its and name is Nose think, Pass. Yeah. yeah. And um, Gen 4 added a lot of evolutions to Gen 2 Pokemon. So um, if you level up your Nose Pass in um, whatever the magnetic caverns are in Gen 4, um, you get a Probopass. I feel like 
obviously Pokemon are just like an affront to one specific feature. It's always one thing is what they're known for, and that's what they're named yeah. after. So when they wanted one extra level of evolution, they're like, oh shit, we've already tripled down on this. <laughs> I guess we just go deeper. I think it was originally based on the Easter, I Easter Island statues. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so that leaves us as the winner of today's debate this. That is Woo! Andrew with his Scooby-Doo-themed... Um, Haunted Carnival! Super, super elaborate, strange situation. Um, I think I, I think you had me at, uh, at the, the floating lantern that carried children away. Um, that was... Yeah, that was that was a lot. Um, I want to say thank you to all of the disturbed writers of the Pokemon series. Oh, some dark who shit. Have, who have cranked out some, yeah, some some weird ass. There are more too that aren't on here. There's Banet, who's a uh, a doll who's who was uh, cursed forever um, with the. That's, that's, it was, was, that's it what was you would have gotten if you picked the doll instead yeah, of the balloon. Ban Banet's also one of my favorites. It was another mega evolution. Um, so Banat is a doll that was abandoned by a child and left it, left out on its own, and then uh, is basically concentrated evil, and it has like a little zipper mouth. So if you um, if you would zip open the mouth, all of the world's evil would come out. So that's fun. So that's so she is the Lotso Huggin Bear yes. of Toy yes. Story Three. Yes, but for but yes. in Pokemon form. Yes, good and full and full of nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, okay, so on that positive note, uh, there you have it, and thank you for listening to Debate This. So go ahead and follow along with the argument on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Debate This Cast, and let us know what you think. I'm Todd Thomas. I'm Kyle the Santa Claus Harper. I'm Matt Wild Hogs Cole. And I'm Andrew Jungle 2 Jungle Henderson. Saying thanks for debating with us, and if you think we're wrong, then you can come fight us by the swing sets, nerds.